pause why Lila drinks her water. Those were all water dance moves, you're welcome. Welcome back to Big City B. I'm B for those of you who are joining for the first time. Let's get started on the book review for today. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin. Let's get started on some of the basics. This book genre is going to be fiction with a little bit of fantasy mixed in and we do have another trigger warning here so make sure you look at the description below to find out what that is. And here is your summary. If you knew the date of your death, how would you live your life? It's 1969 in New York City's Lower East Side, and news has spread about a mystic, magical traveling woman who claims to be able to tell anyone the date of their death. The Gold Children, four adolescents on the cusp of self-awareness, sneak out to hear their fortunes told. Okay. On to the characters! For this book, I'm only going to be talking about the main characters. Let's go from youngest to oldest. For the gold children, we have Simon, Clara, Daniel, and Varya. Or Vera. Varya. I think it's Varya, because they're a Jewish family. Then we have their mother, Gertie, and their father, Saul, who runs a tailoring shop. Let's just go ahead and get right into what I liked about this book. The first thing that I liked was the question of how much of our life is determined by what we do versus how much of it has been predetermined and is destiny or fate. And I think that's super interesting. Don't you guys ever think once in a while like, oh, did I just plan to do that? Or like you go through your mind and you think of the butterfly effect, like what if I made the decision differently and did I make this because I wanted to make this or was it already predetermined out? I think about that stuff all the time and I just think it's so interesting to think about how our lives could be different or if we're really making all of the judgment calls there. The second thing that I liked about this book was how we progress through time. Since we start in 1969, we definitely see some of the 70s, we see early 80s, 90s, and 2000s in there and I thought it was just so interesting to see each of the siblings in each of these time eras. As we go through the book, all four children have their own sections of the book that they tell. And I thought that, I'm gonna use just first name for authors, like we're good old buddies. I thought Chloe did this really well in bringing out the nuances of each time. The third thing that I liked about this book was seeing how each of the kids dealt with learning the day of their death. I thought it was really interesting. Some of them completely disregarded it, some of it took took some took it to heart some of them unconsciously took it to heart and i just i don't i don't know what i would do if i knew the date of my death i don't know if i would use that to live life more fully or if i would be more cautious and try to change it i thought it was an interesting thought process that i got taken on because of how chloe presented these characters the fourth thing that I liked about this book was how the family dynamics change over time. We obviously have people who leave the family, then come back. We have new people arrive to the family. We have passings of people within the story. I thought this was all very interesting and also really realistic. I didn't have any issues with how Chloe wrote the family. I thought it all could be very much true to life. The fifth and final thing that I liked about this book was the sprinkling of fantasy in there. We obviously have the magic of the fortune teller, but then we also have the magic of Clara's magic. Then we also have the presence of ghosts within the story and the question of if they're real or not. And I love magic. So any mention or suggestion of magic, I'm like, yeah, okay, tell me more, tell me more. <laughs> Okay, that was a little bit of an overreaction, but we're just gonna go with it. On to things I didn't like about the book. Nothing sticks out to me. I've liked it a lot. I actually badgered a couple of my friends to put it on their read list after I read it, like so much so that I was like, you have to read it. This was a great book. And I just became a chatty Cathy after, 
after reading the book and I just wanted everyone to, to read it too and I wanted to see how they felt about the book. So going back to Goodreads, the main problem that I found with people who didn't like the book was that they didn't gain enough from the book. Okay, hold on. Since when do you have to gain something from reading a book? It's about pleasure and joy and most of the time you don't gain anything from reading fiction books. Okay, I take that back. Sometimes you gain like life lessons and stuff, but for the most part, fiction is written for your enjoyment, not so you're all of a sudden elevated to a new intellectual level. I feel like that reasoning is so pretentious and I hated it. The second thing that I saw on Goodreads was that it wasn't fantastical enough for them. Yeah, but uh, it's about life. So I did poo poo on them. I did not like that criticism either because not every book that has magical elements has to be a full blown fantasy book. Maybe they were searching for that and then that's why they were upset. But I liked the little sprinkling of fantasy that was in here. It didn't detract from any of the realism within the book, which I liked. I don't always have to read Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings or The Night Circus or any other magical book where it definitely takes place in a completely different world. Sometimes it's nice to know that real life world can have a little bit of magic in it too if you just kind of look for it and are open to it. So that didn't bother me and I liked it. So you go, Chloe Benjamin, you keep doing your thing. Don't listen to these haters on Goodreads who gave you one or two stars. Aha, onto our quotes for this book. I have a couple of them for our first quote. Quote number one. She knows that stories have the power to change things. The past and the future, even the present. Stories are the magic within our own lives. Stories are the magic within our own lives. They can change things, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that was my song, you're welcome. Quote number two. <laughs> It sounds like you're saying we can choose to live or choose to survive. This is a hard quote for me because I don't think it's a choice of either or. I think you can choose to live your life, but also do it in a safe enough way where you do survive. One of the characters definitely takes this quote out of hand. She also has some OCD tendencies, so I don't know if this quote stems from her OCD tendencies or if her OCD tendencies are a result of her foretold death date. So that's another interesting thought I'm gonna have to simmer on after this review. Ooh, this one ties back so nicely to what I talked about before. Here's what happens. You make choices and then they make choices. Your choices make choices. I like this quote because it ties into so nicely my whole little tangent about the butterfly effect that I just had earlier. Other people have that thought process that I do, so that means I'm not crazy. Only a little bit crazy. Lastly, would I recommend this book? I think I spoiled this bit when I talked about how directly after reading this book, I went around and started running my mouth about how much everyone should read it and put it on their read list. So yes, I would recommend this book to you. I thought the family was relatable. I definitely had the thought of, wait, am I controlling my own life or is this already pre-planned out for me? So that was good because it wasn't until afterwards that I realized this was the theme of the book. I really liked Chloe's writing. I think she made all of the characters very distinct from one another and I wanted to stay longer in each of their worlds. I wanted to know more about them and that I think is a great sign of good writing is when you want to continue reading from one of your character's perspectives. Actually, I liked Chloe's writing so much that I've actually put her other book, The Anatomy of Dreams, on my to read list. The little excerpt from a fellow writer about this book was that Chloe created an eerie world with the effects of a lingering dream. And as we all know from my Starless Sea review, I love that feeling. I love feeling like I'm coming out of a dream when I'm reading a book or when I stop reading the book. So I think that's gonna be a good one for me. So it's on the to read list, so make sure you keep your eye out for that review. Probably won't be for a while because I definitely have a lot of other books that I need to get reviewing. So that's all I have for you guys today. Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you thought of this review. 
or tell me if you think that your life is led by yourself or if you think it's predetermined. Go ahead and hit that like button down below and make sure you subscribe so you're notified the next time I put out a book review. Okay, everyone, all the best always. Bye.